I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on algebra. We'll now look into perfect squares and sides of right triangle. Now these sides of right triangle are very important since in many applications we actually need to use them. So it's a good idea to understand how to generate these numbers which could form three sides of a right triangle and also it is good to remember them especially when we are working to solve multiple choice questions in a test paper. So normally in a right triangle let us say the two smaller sides are A and B we keep the hypotenuse as C in that case this relation A square plus B square equals to C square holds good. So these three numbers A, B and C are called Pythagorean triples. Right? So Pythagorean triples are these numbers A, B and C which are three sides of a right triangle. In this video we will learn how to calculate the value of A, B and C. Right? We have two different methods very popular and we'll just verify with x equals to 1, 2, 3 and 4 uh, for these two expressions. Right? So the value of A can be calculated by placing x as any number 1, 2, 3, 4. So we notice that using these formulas the term A is an odd number. right? So we'll calculate them A which is equal to 2x plus 1 and then we'll calculate what B is according to this formula. It is 2x squared plus 2x and the value of C is equal to 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. So that is 1, C is 1 more than B, right? <clears throat> we'll take some values of x to begin with. So let me make a column for x also. So we'll have value of x written down here. So if the value of x is 1, 2, 3 and 4, then what are these ABCs, the sides of the right triangle? That is what we are going to check. So if x is 1, in that case, if I substitute 1 here, we get 2 times 1 plus 1, which is 3. And if I substitute 1 in this equation, then I get b as equals to, uh, let me write this as 2 times 1 square plus 2 times 1. So 2 and 2, 4. And here if I substitute 1, I get 2 times 1 square plus 2 times 1 plus 1. So this is, this part is same as b, so it is kind of b plus 1, right? So it could be written as 5. Now if I substitute 2 here, then we get 2 times 2 plus 1, which is 5. And substituting 2 here, plus 2 times 2, we get what? 4 times 2 is 8, 8 and 4, 12. And this value will be 2 times 2 square plus 2 times 2 plus 1. So it has to be 13, right? For 3, we get 2 times 3 plus 1. So that is the next odd number. And 2 times 3 square plus 2 times 3 is 3 square is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. And this is 6, so we get uh, 24, right? So 9 times 2 is 18. 18 plus 6 is 24. Now here it is one more, so we get this as 3 square plus 2 times 3 plus 1, which is 25. And now with 4, we get 2 times 4 plus 1, which is 9. And here we have 2 times 4 cube plus 2 times, sorry, square, yeah. And 2 times <coughs> 4 equals to what? 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32. And to 32, if you add 8, we get 40. And here we get 2 times 
4 square plus 2 times 4 plus 1 should be 41. Now, we got these values. Let us check, do they really work, right? So, let's uh, verify. So, let us check if uh, 9 square plus 40 square is equal to what? So, if I use the value 9 square plus 40 square, I get the number 1681. I get 1681. And what is the square root of 1681? Well, if I do square root of our answer, I get 41. Correct. So, it really works, right? So, what we have seen from our calculations that the formula is correct to produce the triples, right? So let's solve. Now, just as we have produced these Pythagorean triples, the set of numbers which could form three sides of a right triangle, you could use the second set of expressions to find A, B, and C and verify your result. You will notice that we got the triples, which are 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, 9, 40, 41. Now, important to note that we are skipping here by 1, right? So, uh, let's take to the other page and see how can we produce the numbers which are missing, right? So, I'll rewrite these numbers and then again work on it. So, from the first set, uh, we just calculated the triples, which were kind of uh, 3, 4, 5. Let me write down here 3, 4, and 5. Then we had with 5, 12, and 13. And we had 7, 24, 25. Then we calculated 9, 40, and 41. You can see the missing numbers, right? So missing numbers you could have by doubling these, right? Or working with these. So if I double 3, then we get 6, oh sorry, 6, 8, and 10, for example. So if I double 5, I get 10, 24, and 26. So likewise, we could actually get many other triples from these which we already have. Perfect. So now, obviously, we'll not be starting with 4 because 4 is already a part of 3, 4, and 5, right? So that means most of the numbers will be covered, right? Now in part 2, what you could do here is that you can start with the second set and then figure out, uh, do, we get you, do we get the same numbers or not? But in this case, what I will do here is to verify that the second equation is kind of similar. Of course, the first one, the value of a is same, right? So the value of a, as you can see, is 2x plus 1, which gives you an odd number to begin with. So we'll now see if a is equals to 2x plus 1, and we are saying b equals to a square minus 1 over 2. Is it same as 2x squared plus 2x? Let's check this part. So replacing a with 2x plus 1, we get 2x plus 1 whole square. That is the value of a minus 1 over 2. Now let us expand this. So we get a squared plus 2ab. We get 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 minus 1 over 2. Correct? And that gives you... This 1 and 1 cancel, so we get 4x squared plus 4x over 2, and that is 2x squared plus 2x, correct? So that is exactly what we have here. Perfect. We can also verify result for C, right? So for C, it is a squared plus 1 by 2. Replacing a with 2x plus 1, whole square plus 1 by 2. What do we get? We get again 4x square plus 4x plus 1 this time and then we have to add 1 and then divide by 2, right? So this time we get 2x square plus 2x plus 
1 because that 1 plus 1 is 2 and 2 divided by 2 is 1. So that also is verified. So when these formulas are kind of same, we will produce the same result. Perfect. So I hope that makes sense. So the formula which I used here was, let's say if I have p plus q whole square, then we know that is equal to p square plus 2pq plus q square. Correct. Now in part c, we will verify that sum of squares of a and b when given in this form is actually equals to c square, which is a trinomial. Correct. So let's do that part now. Now to begin with, we have these three numbers, right? So, so what I will do here is uh, generate the formula. So if I have p plus q plus r in general, and if I have to square it, what is the formula? Well, we'll make this formula now. We have p plus q plus r times p plus q plus r. Right? So when you multiply them, p with p becomes p square plus with these two it becomes pq plus pr and when you multiply with q you get qp plus q square plus qr right and then with r we get rp plus rq plus r square and when you combine the like terms we do have p square plus q square plus r square and you see this PQ and QP. So we have these sets and they add up and we get 2 PQ plus 2 QR plus 2 RP. So that becomes the formula to expand the right hand side. For the left hand side, when we have these squares, you already know the formula, right? So uh, we can now check our result. So let us do the left side. So left side here is 2x plus 1 whole square plus we have 2x square plus 2x whole square, right? So expanding, we get 4x square plus 4x plus 1. This is the first part. And here, we, if we expand, we get x to the power of 4, right? So we get plus 4x to the power of 4 plus twice these numbers, so 8x cube plus square of this number which is 4x square correct so we get these six terms and when we combine these six terms uh, let's write them from the highest uh, degree to the lowest so we get 4x to the power of 4 and then as far as cube we have 8x cube the square terms we have 2 so we get plus 8 x square the x terms we have only 1 which is plus 4 x and then a constant which is 1 so this is our left side now let's find what is the right side so right side for us is square of 2 x square plus 2 x plus 1 whole square we're going to use this formula right so square of each so when you do square of each you get 4x to the power of 4 plus square of this 4x square plus 1, right? Now, twice product of two of them, right? So twice 2 to 8 product of these two will give you x cube plus twice product of these two, that means 4x1, right? So that is 4x plus twice product of this and that, so 4x square. Correct? So we have these six terms, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now you will notice that first and the last term do match, right? So we can add these terms, which are the like terms. We have 4x to the power of 4 plus 8x cubed plus this x square and the last x squared match, so we get 8x squared plus 4x plus 1. So we do notice that the left side is equal to the right side, correct? So this formula, therefore, always work, right? So this is the left side, this is the right side, and both give you the same result, correct? 
So therefore, this formula really works and it can produce Pythagorean triples for any value of x, right? So we normally use the whole numbers to find the value since uh, we are interested in those whole numbers which can form a right triangle. So I hope this exercise helps you to understand how to produce the triples and also to understand that the two formulas which we have shared in this particular video really work, right? So it's good to remember that beginning with A as an odd number, 2x plus 1, right? We could actually find the other two sides uh, by just kind of extending this 2x plus 1 plus 2x squared, right? And this is one less. Do you see that? So we add 2x squared to this and the center term we remove the one part and we get our formula, right? So that is the way you could really remember the formula and uh, produce the triples whenever required. So I hope you find it interesting and useful. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.